are here. Hello, welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in today's episode. My name is Bryce Tufts. Today with me is Shauna Asper, CPA. So she is helping entrepreneurs craft clear business and financial plans so that they can feel confident in their business strategy. You know, thanks so much for um, appearing on today's episode. Is there anything else you'd like to add to that introduction, Shauna? Yeah, so one thing um, that I'm still working in that tagline is I am in the process of becoming a certified professional coach as well. So through an ICF accredited program. So while I do focus a lot on strategy and financials with my background as a CPA, I really, really care about helping people overcome anything that's holding them back as well, because I have my own experience there and mindset is such a huge part of business. So I have that as well. And I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for having me, Bryce. Excellent. So, you know, most entrepreneurs have a backstory. Can you talk about what was life like before you got into coaching? Yeah. So this is, I, I feel like it's interesting, but it's my story. So maybe that's why I think it's interesting. Um, so I married my high school sweetheart and convinced him to go to college with me. And while we were in college, he was like, Hey, I'm going to join this air force ROTC thing. I was like, Oh, that sounds like a cool club. Sure. And then about, you know, three years later, I'm sitting there like laying on the floor crying. I'm like, you're going to deploy. We're going to be in the military. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, and I had always been a super type A driven, like, had binders of success plans and I knew what I was doing like finished my undergrad in three years got my master's in year four and all of a sudden after the internship and having a job offer that I really wanted that was all kind of like taken from me because we were going to move to the middle of nowhere Mississippi for my husband to go through pilot training and there weren't a lot of job opportunities there so I was going to go into public accounting and instead I'm sitting there jobless trying to figure out what I'm going to do. And I ended up working in my family business for about a year and a half. So I, I, had been, I grew up working in the family business. Like business was the language of our household because both my parents worked in the business. I spent my summers working in it. Like I had seen a lot of the inner workings and I went back in the capacity of accountant um, slash like an operations officer but what that really meant was as a like newly minted accountant I was doing like accounting and bidding and field work like wearing my construction boots out there helping with directional drilling and stuff because it, um, my family has a utility construction company so what that means is they lay water line and sewer line <laughs> basically and it just, it gave me a really good insight into small businesses more so than I'd even ever had, but it still just didn't feel right. So I transitioned after like becoming a general contractor qualifier for the company and all this sort of stuff. I transitioned into working in public accounting in Mississippi, driving an hour. And I started to interact with more small businesses there and uh, really got to see how much people love the craft that they do and don't understand the business background. So I was helping clean up financials for tax time and was seeing so much that was incorrect. And from the standpoint of like, it wasn't helping them run better businesses. Like if they had had correct financials, they could have made better financial decisions all year long and everything was just kind of a mess. So this led me on this wonderful path of thinking like, okay, I'm gonna start a business and I'm gonna really help people. Oh. Like, I'm not gonna just pay lip service to this, like, we do your taxes, I'm gonna help people. And I was a girl on a mission, you know, got the website up, like, all this sort of stuff. And then it came time to sell. And I just was completely not in a place where I felt confident, like, I mean, I had the background, I had everything I needed, but I was not confident at all. And I knew I wanted to help people in my work, but I just couldn't step out there and do it. So I took this wonderful winding path of saying, oh, I meant to help people by being an accounting instructor. So I went and applied to get my PhD. 
got into a program, spent three years doing that. And uh, last summer I realized I'm like, this is not what I'm meant to do with my life. Like, this is not how I'm meant to help people. I'm not meant to teach undergrads. Like my heart just wasn't there. Mm -hmm. And it made me circle back to this. Like, I really want to help small business owners. I really want to help people build businesses that are life giving, especially after growing up with a family where, like I said, business was the talk of the dinner table all around the house. I mean, business consumed and still does my parents' life. Uh, and I don't want that for everybody. Like if you want that, that's great. But if you want a better option, I want to help you get there. Mm -hmm. So sorry, that was a long story, but that was my winding path to here. <laughs> yeah, that's why you're here. We gotta, I mean, this, this is real. This is real life, you know? Stuff yeah. Doesn't always go according to plan. I mean, like, finish college really fast really quickly and it's like that, that, that's a, that's actually a real a real thing right there's a lot of people talk about people finishing college six or seven years in but the flip side is when you finish it in like two three four years and then just like you know what next you know yeah that's yeah. a challenge but okay so you know what problems are people trying to solve when they start working with you Mm, I love that question. Um, I think in general, people come to me because they feel embarrassed about their financials and the operations of their business. And I've actually heard that word out of two people in the last two weeks. They're like, I'm so embarrassed by how my financials look. I, I know I should be doing more. I want to do more. And I always tell them, like, the fact that you care puts you way ahead of a lot of people because there are a lot of people that are like, I don't know, financials are something to deal with at tax time. They don't help me otherwise. Um, and, and also just feeling completely overwhelmed in their business. So embarrassed and overwhelmed because there's so much that you can do in your business. Right. And I say can, because we all get feeling like we should be doing all of these things. And they're not all exactly A, our zone of genius, or B, very helpful. You know, the Pareto principle, 80% of your uh, like positive outcome comes from 20% of your effort. Like, I don't think people hone in on that 20% yeah. very much. They just feel overwhelmed. Um, so that is where I try to help people create that more systematic approach and really get a handle on what they're doing, the benefit that's there, and um, move forward in a more positive life giving way. Can I ask you a question? So why do you think it's so hard for a lot of people to hone in on that 20%? Mm, uh, well, first of all, I think people don't track metrics, mm -hmm. right? Like we've uh, mentioned the financials, if, but it goes for financials. It goes for, um, your online marketing efforts, anything. If you're not tracking it and knowing what's performing well and you're getting results, then you feel like you have to keep doing all of those things, right? Because you don't know where the results are coming from. Whereas if you were really like, oh, that lead came from this place, all of these leads seem to keep coming from this place, well, then you can knock off doing all that other stuff, right? Cut it out. Mm -hmm. But you can only give focus and everything to what you're actually tracking. So there's this saying in, in coaching, maybe life, where focus goes, energy flows. You know, so what you focus on is where you put your effort. And I think people just aren't doing that. And I think there's a lot of uh, FOMO. So people uh, fear, fear that they're missing out on valuable business opportunities by not doing things. And even I've been guilty of that. Like, uh, before this call, we were talking about how I hate Instagram. Like I hate creating content for Instagram, but you haven't seen me delete my Instagram account either. I still keep posting there because I'm like, Oh, but what if yeah. it's like, no, Sean, <laughs> we got to teach you about cross posting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. I got to get better. But you know, so let me ask you this. So like, you know, things are happening fast. People are trying to move fast. What advice would you give to someone who is, you know, in their business right now and is starting to get overwhelmed 
how can they start to track, but they have all this, you know, a mess, like, like, like for accountants, they have a drawer of receipts. How, should they start back there or should they just start for now on moving forward? Um, mm, that's a good question. So oh, I'll, I guess I'll address that specifically. Like sh if I haven't done anything with my financials, should I start now and move forward? Yes. Um, start from where you're at, start building a system out for like, these are, I'm going to track these expenses every month. I'm going to have a financial date with myself every month. And then, you know, like since we're at the beginning of the year, that's great. You know, it's, it makes it very easy to be like, Oh, I'll do all of 2020. Like we're at the beginning of the year. But if you find yourself in June or July and you're like, well, what do I do? Like, do I go back and do all of 2020 start with now? And then if you find yourself having more time, which I don't, you know, people are like, well, I'll never find more time. But if you do and you find yourself wanting that data, then start back plugging that stuff. Like you can always pull in more, but focus going forward. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I just missed, lost my train of thought. I was thinking about like systems and different um, ways to make it easier, right? So mm -hmm. I think a lot of people, you know, are scared to do either financial or just business plans or just planning in general and tracking because they think it's going to take a lot of time. Do you ever work on, you know, simplifying that tracking for people? Yeah. So that's actually something that I am in the middle of doing. Mm -hmm. I was talking to someone yesterday and they said, I keep wanting to get on top of my financials, but I'm a perfectionist. And so I'm worried I'm going to get in there and not do something right. So that keeps me from even doing anything at all. And I, you know, to me, I'm like, well, it's not like, it's not that big of a deal. If you miscategorize an expense in one place, like A, it can get caught at the end of the year by a professional and, and B, it's like, it's one thing, it, like, it's okay. But I can understand where that like paralyzes people. Uh, so I'm actually like working on creating like a checklist for some of that stuff so that people have a go-to guide of like, okay, if I have this, like, realistically, where should it go? You know, like a cheat sheet, because mm -hmm. it does get very overwhelming. I don't think there are good guides out there, or at least these people haven't found them. The ones that I, like I've been talking to haven't found them. So I want to have that for people to like take the overwhelm out of it. And then some of the stuff, like as long as it's categorized, as long as it's there, it's very easy to clean up. But if you are in the place where you're like, I'm not going to do anything with it, then you get to the year <laughs> end of the year and it's like, and we have 20,000 transactions that need to go someplace. Like that's not a good place to be. Can I ask you a question? So, you know, let's keep this like going back high level, making, making it exciting. So some people might be scared, yeah. you know, overwhelmed at this point. How do you make it fun for people? How do you make, you know, accounting and, and just, the beginning planning stuff fun for people? Mm, I love that question. Um, so, you know, this is, this is something that's hard, right? Because I, I love it. And so it's like, it is fun for me, but I also understand the dread of having too much to do. And for me, I think if I even dug back to like what got me excited about it in the first place is when you have all the information in front of you, gives you a really good picture of where you can go. And I think if you can start thinking about your financials from that place of like, wow, this is the secret data that's going to help me unlock a better future just by knowing it, just by understanding it. And if you focus on that, not like the confusion that is right now, because like, yeah, learning some of this stuff is, it's a little bit challenging, like find the right person that's going to explain it well and simply and if you don't get it they're going to keep explaining it until it clicks but find the excitement in having a better future because you know these things mm -hmm. that's why i always cared about you know tracking anything creating plans for anything because it helped me live a better life overall okay um you know so talking about life overall so do you do you consider business and life to be the same thing Mm, yeah, I do. I, 
Um, I once took a, a wonderful quiz. I'm a assessment nerd. And based on my like profile, like I very much need my passions and my profession to be somewhat one in the same. Not everybody feels that way, but I do, hence why I'm doing what I'm doing. Um, so I, I do view it all as like one big mix. Okay. So, so what is your vision for this mix? Mm. So I, I guess if I talk about like, I've talked about the vision of my business where I really want to help business owners simplify their business, but I want to do that because I want them to be able to have more life in the, in the living that they're doing instead of being a slave to their business. And that's what I view for myself as well. Like this business is to help me build the life that I want to have. Um, I mentioned that my husband's in the Air Force. I want my business to support us so that when he leaves the Air Force, he can do whatever he wants to do in his second career. There's no pressure there on the transition or the timing or any of that. And that's just like a very personal um, like driver for me. But growing up and having parents that were so involved in their business, like I understand that. I understand having the passion and marrying the two. Uh -huh but I really want to have more life and living. Um, and like my husband, and I plan to live on a sailboat one day. I don't know how long we'll live on the set, the sailboat, but that is our plan. We want our kids to kind of like explore the world a little bit more. And I want to be able to have this business and do that as we explore and enjoy what this world has to offer. Mm, so, so once your business is up, you'll be able to work on it from anywhere, right? Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Well, you know, uh, what is success to you? I love this question. Um, and I, I think it's like a hot topic right now, like redefining success, especially within the coaching space. Mm -hmm. And to me, success is synonymous with freedom, mm -hmm. like freedom of time, uh, freedom of money to pursue the things that I want to pursue. I want to be able to set my schedule, have flexibility in my schedule, be present with my family, like not, uh, like in my mind, I, I picture it as like a lot of things that are opposite of some of the, the corporate culture we have where everyone, or not, maybe not even corporate culture. We're in this like culture of like hustle and grind, like put in all the hours and you'll be successful, like that type of thing. And I don't, I don't like that pressure. Even though I'm a, a type A, like I can hustle with the best of them to rest me. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, success to me is having space, having margin in your life and being able to pursue the things that like I want to do. Interesting. So are you working on any special projects like course, book, um, group program? A song? <laughs> a song. That would be horrible for everyone involved. <laughs> um, yeah, I am working on special projects. Um, I think as a business owner, all projects are special, right? Um, but I, I, have an, I started the year with an overall plan of launching a signature course um, later this summer or fall, which is basically my one-on-one -on -one coaching um, boil down into like a coursework framework. So helping people really identify what that 20% is that moves the needle, getting a handle on their finances, like building that strategic plan, but then also trying to incorporate a lot of the mindset stuff that I know from coaching. Granted, it won't be as in depth as working with me one-on-one -on -one, because I can't sit there and like ask you a question here and answer look back and forth. But I'm going to do my best to like put as much of that in there as I can, because I think that component is so important. Um, but I'm also a new project on my radar. I'm teaching a live QuickBooks online uh, class, a series of classes in my local area. And I'm going to turn that into an online like mini course as well, because I got feedback from others that were like, oh, I would be in that beta group if you want to beta test it or that type of thing. So that's an overall plan for me to give support there. I QuickBooks Online is my favorite accounting tool because I'm an accountant and 
it's super familiar for CPAs, works well at tax season, all of that sort of stuff. So, and I'm, I've worked in it for like 10 years, but I know it's really confusing for a lot of people. So I really want to help simplify that, even though it's not a like major part of my business. I know it's a major part of what people have to deal with when they're getting their financials straight. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So where can people find out more about you? Uh, probably the best place is to go to my website, which is uh, shaunaasper.com. And on there I have links for all the content I provide. I have a podcast uh, and different freebies. But my favorite place to interact with people is in my Facebook group. So I love providing content there. I do weekly live trainings. And I just love interacting with people and really getting to learn more about their businesses and the struggles that they're having and try to help however I can. If you don't know how to spell her name, it's S-E-A-N-N-A-A-S-P-E-R. It's under her um, image on this thing. W what is your website called? What'd you say? ShaunaAsper.com or? Yep. Okay. That's how you spell it, spell it so that you guys will be able to find it. Yeah. Very important. <laughs> yes. Yes. Because it does not look the same as it sounds. Yeah. So that's interesting. So it's like, it, it looks like your products are starting to kind of relate to each other, right? So yeah. not only do you help them, but now I'm going to show them how to use QuickBooks. That could be like your free 30-day QuickBooks challenge or whatever. Yeah. yeah and then, then they need accounting and then you're like getting what? 500 to X amount of dollars per month off accounting too. I think it'd be cool. But yeah. Yeah, you know, thanks for watching the video to this point, people. I really appreciate it. You're probably one of, you know, the select few that can actually stay attention or stay attuned to something longer than eight seconds at a time. So if you want more interviews and content just like this, I recommend you go check out the link in the description below. It's a link to my group called Uncapped Growth Strategies. As the name suggests, we give you everything that you need to start moving forward towards that business and that life that I believe you deserve. Um, you know, Tony Robbins oftentimes says, success leaves clues. Inside the group, I've had the privilege of being able to, you know, interact and interview these different business owners that, you know, have been at different points in their business, from people who have a seven-figure business to people who are just starting out. And I've noticed a lot of trends, and I've noticed a lot of things that successful people have in common. And I'm able to help you guys step-by-step step learn these principles and start applying those towards your life so that you can start reaching that success faster. Um, you know, one thing just popped in my mind, one of the most miserable moments of my life was waking up, you know, after doing a business for three years to realize that I was back at square one. I don't want that to happen to you. Go join this group so you don't have to wake up three years from now at square one. Hopefully you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed creating it. Thank you so much, Shauna, for coming on to today's episode. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Excellent. And we will see you guys in the next one. Have a great day. Take it easy. Talk to you soon. Subscribe and sayonara.